I made a promise to the country that we would not end up with a Democrat speaker, and I was right. I couldn't make that promise again today. Johnson's job is safe. It is. That's how we lose the majority, not because Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion to vacate against a Republican speaker that betrayed everyone. What Marjorie Taylor Greene and others, Thomas Massey, were saying was that you know, they want to look around to see who could be a replacement speaker. It's a, ba- it's a, it's a bad day for the country for anybody that votes for this. Now I'm going to move to an area which might be a little tricky for a House Republican like yourself. Mike Gallagher leaving next month. Congressman Ken Buck, he it says it's dysfunction. He's gone. The majority is down to just one. Seems like Republicans are in complete disarray. You can't do anything. They- Okay, things that demonstrate Republican turmoil. Inability to elect a first, second, or third choice speaker. Check. And you might have to have some whipping going on here where Tom Mm. Emmer, as the nominee, he is the whip, needs to make sure that he has the votes lined up. I mean, if you're the the whip, you know, you're supposed to be able to count the votes right on a vote on the floor. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's Mm. been uh, an Achilles heel for Republicans lately. Yeah, you know who did it well? Boy, she could count votes. Nancy Pelosi. In caucus, that we're able to resolve that so that we go unified to the House floor and deliver a speaker. I hope you don't take this personally, but do you guys have any idea how clownish you look? Infighting, check. So, so George, when, when I was uh, teaching uh, law school, um, I, I learned and, and taught certain constitutional principles. When Marjorie Taylor Greene was teaching CrossFit, she learned a whole different set of values, evidently. Another member of Congress resigned today. So now I'll be told, Chip, we only have a one-seat majority or two-seat majority. I don't even know what it is anymore. Let me ask you a question. Does it matter? In 2018, we had the House, we had the Senate, we had the White House, and we had a bigger majority than we have today, and we utterly failed to secure the border. Totally dropped the ball, didn't do- Representatives quitting before the term ends. Check, check. This place just keeps going downhill, and, and I don't need to spend my time here. We've taken impeachment and we've made it a, a social media issue as opposed to a, a constitutional concept. Mike Johnson's ability to talk me into staying here is it going to be about as successful as his ability into talking me into unconstitutional impeachments. Okay, things that demonstrate the point of no return. Fox News calling you out for said turmoil. Well, you know, the rap against your party, sir, uh, is that you don't know how to negotiate. You're lousy at it, and you have a track record where the Democrats constantly seem to get the better of you. How, how do you answer that? Well, I, I think it's because the Democrats have a good, uh, or a good, they do a good job about staying together. Um, and and the Republican Party, it's like trying to herd cats. Uh, it just, it, you, everybody's going different directions. As Republicans look to bounce back from last week's train wreck impeachment hearing, part two, return of the laptop. It's time to pack it up. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What oh, is no. the, it's the category crime? of crimes that you're then charged? You under have charges. A long hundred. You have charges, yeah. sir. Please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir? under Rico. Yes, I'll- Mr. Chairman. Thank you very kindly. Um, with any luck, today marks the end of perhaps the most spectacular failure in the history of congressional investigations. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. I want to help you out. You can second it. Right. Like make the motion to impeach President Biden. Go ahead. Your turn. You second it. It seems that certain hosts on a network once notorious for enabling the GOP's party strategy of leadership through chaos. Right. Turning to the president, is the Biden impeachment now unlikely? I think it's increasingly unlikely, especially with another GOP House member who, by the way, was a vote against this, Ken Buck, saying that he's out even sooner than expected. I think Republicans are trying to be realistic with the margins that they have. But I think the impeachment vote getting to the floor, a little bit less likely today. Have had enough of the coddling and instead called a spade a spade. If said spade was a political party with a House majority set to kick out their 48th choice for speaker. That's how we lose the majority, not because Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion to vacate against a Republican speaker that betrayed everyone 
worse than any Republican speaker in decades. That I'm not the problem here. First, it was Fox Business host Stuart Varney who laid bare the harsh truth for GOP Representative Waltz to swallow. Now I'm going to move to an area which might be a little tricky for a House Republican like yourself. Mike Gallagher leaving next month. Congressman Ken Buck, he's, he says it's dysfunction. He's gone. The majority is down to just one. Seems like Republicans are in complete disarray. You can't do anything. How's this going to play out in November? Well, look, at the end of the day, I think real voters outside of the Beltway, inside Washington drama, they're focused on the price of eggs, the price of gas, the world that is on fire. I mean, are you kidding me? ISIS is back already and our southern border is wide open to the tune of millions yeah well it's definitely not going to let a bunch of people in it's focused on actually turning people around on it it is interesting republicans four months ago would not give funding for ukraine for israel and for our southern border because we demanded changes in policy in november my team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators the result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? That conservatives got together and said it was a good bill? I'll be darned. That's amazing. That bipartisan bill would hire 1,500 more security agents and officers, 100 more immigration judges help tackle the backload of two million cases, 4,300 more asylum officers, and new policies so they can resolve cases in six months instead of six years now. Paul Neil Cavuto echoed a similar sentiment that follows Republicans wherever they go, even amongst their own constituents, that they simply cannot govern. Well, you know, the rap against your party, sir, uh, is that you don't know how to negotiate. You're lousy at it, and you have a track record where the Democrats constantly seem to get the better of you. How, how do you answer that? Well, I, I think it's because the Democrats have a good, uh, or a good, they do a good job about staying together. Um, and and the Republican Party, it's like trying to herd cats. Uh, it just, it, you, everybody's going different directions. Uh, is impeachment the next step? Are you going to hold a vote on the House floor? I know it's up to Mike Johnson, but the margins, Congressman, you lost Kevin McCarthy. Ken Buck left last week. George Santos was ousted. Unless you get Democratic votes, this is going to be real tough. So it, it kind of seems like you're chasing your tail at this point because this is not going to well, go anywhere. And this goes to show just how far they've fallen, right? Even when you thought they couldn't stoop any lower. But when their own party members are saying this about their colleagues on the way out, you know that the entire framework is rotten to the core. Uh, you, you understand why I'm that. asking, right? Kevin McCarthy abandoned you, Ken Buck abandoned you, and Mike Gallagher just announced on Friday that he's going to resign on April the 13th. You got a one vote majority. What's going on in the yeah, House? It was all going down. I guess that didn't cause you to rethink your decision? Not at all. Not at all. No rearview mirror. Happy to, happy to move on. Dysfunctional place. I mean, I mean, you, you must have been pretty intensely frustrated to not only not run again, but to, but to leave early. And you're not alone, obviously. Mike Gallagher just said he's leaving, too. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, since this Congress started, uh, there have been efforts to impeach uh, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, the ch uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the President, the uh, Attorney General, the FBI Director, um, and in fact did impeach the Director of Homeland, uh, or Secretary of Homeland Security. Uh, serious uh, problems with setting priorities. We have a, a, a very uh, uh, tragic circumstance in Ukraine. We have um, a, a spiraling debt, uh, all, all kinds of out of control problems, and we focus on messaging bills that get us nowhere. This was not a Republican bill. This was a Democrat bill. Yeah, but people even in your own party are attacking you, saying we do not need more division. I mean, after all, Congressman, look how many people have left. Ken Buck stepping down, Mike Gallagher stepping down, and, and Mike Gallagher is leaving at a time that even makes things tougher for the Republicans, right? He's leaving early, isn't he? I mean, in their relentless efforts to appease their cult leader, they've foregone any identity that is outside of the extreme MAGA movement, which means, yes, an inability to work on bipartisan legislation, unless by work on you mean vote no, then pose for pictures trying to take credit for it. Republican Congressman Lauren Boebert is once again taking credit for federal funding for Colorado projects that Boebert actually voted against. 
Boebert's office sent out a news release bragging about her role in securing funding for projects like highway safety improvements and water reservoir construction in southern Colorado. Boebert requested that funding through the earmark process, which is when members of Congress add local projects to bigger spending bills. In this case, Boebert's earmarks were part of the government spending bill that passed in early March. Boebert is one of 40 Republicans who obtained earmarks and then voted against the bill. She was out calling it, quote, swamp omnibus bill and said that it funded Democratic priorities. It is no wonder that so many Republicans are refuting the party they once belonged to. Would you want to be aligned with someone like this? It's time to be honest about the vaccine injured. And we need to stop allowing these COVID-19 vaccines to be given Gentle out ladies, to children. Gentle ladies, time has expired. I now recognize Mr. Garcia from California for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm sorry you all had to go through that. That was a lot of uh, conspiracy theories and wild accusations. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.